This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is a comprehensive guide to geologic history and we're going to explain why the Earth's history is separated and divided into different time periods with different names and the reason for that. For example, why are there eons versus eras versus periods and epochs and finally ages and why this is important for Earth's history. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The age of the Earth has been contested and debated about for thousands of years between different cultures, societies, and locations. However, recently with the emergence of geology as a subject and geologic time, scientists were able to study and observe different rock layers and strata, different kinds of fossils, different kinds of organisms and species that lived in the past and different paleo environments based on principles of geology. This has enabled scientists to piece together the age of the earth bit by bit and create this geologic timeline going from the formation of the earth to present day and how we subdivided the times to accommodate for all these different discoveries and observations about different fossils, rock layers, and organisms that lived on the earth. The best place to start for any timeline is the beginning. So in this case, we're looking at the earth's formation around 4.56 billion years ago. And we're looking at a very large chunk of geologic history, which is called Precambrian time, which basically means that it's a time before there was multicellular life on the planet. So there was single celled life, and this large extent of time equates to about 88% of all Earth's history, around 4 billion years. And this is broken into three main subdivisions or eons the Hadean, Archean, and the Proterozoic. Now, Proterozoic means, if you see a word that says zoic, that's Latin for animals or life, and proteo means ancient or before, anything that happened prior. So, ancient life. Now, this is where we started to find, or first find, fossilized remains in rock strata of animals. So, we start to think about animals and life being on the planet around two and a half billion years ago. Don't forget the GA stands for billion, giga arnum. And the Archean and the Hadean, which is basically how the Earth, Earth formed with the oceans, the atmosphere, the moon, and tides, and we started to form the first continents, and that was all prior to the first life being present. The first half a billion years was the Hadean Eon, and this was split into three separate eras, the Paleo, Meso, and Neo. Meso means middle, Paleo means old, and Neo means new. So the divisions are based on time and when they fit in this larger expanse of time, the Hadean Eon. Again, this is when the Earth was forming and cooling down. The Archean Eon, again, this is once the Earth has cooled down, you start getting the formation of the oceans, the great era of bombardment with asteroids, and the collision with the moon, which is Theia visionally. And you get these four separate eras that are based, again, on the time period. So you've got Eoarchaean, Paleoarchaean, Mesoarchaean, and Neoarchaean, similar to that of the Hadean. And this was a longer time period, about one and a half billion years. This is the Proterozoic Eon, the largest expanse of time in our geologic history. This covers two billion years, from two and a half billion years ago to about half a billion years ago. And this includes important changes to the Earth, like the increase in oxygen, free oxygen in the atmosphere, and ending in the Cambrian explosion. This eon is very important because it is the first time where scientists started to find fossilized remains of animals, ancient animals, in the rock layers. So this is broken into three separate eras. The paleo Proterozoic era, the meso Proterozoic era, the neo Proterozoic era, and these again are divided into further smaller subdivisions of what's called periods. So the Paleoproterozoic has four periods, the Meso has three, and the Neo ha also has three. And they signify changes in the rocks or the 
different kinds of fossils that were found or changing world planet events like the cryogenian which was when you had the whole earth as a snowball a very large extent of ice age or ice accumulation across the whole planet even parts of the equator were close to being frozen now we come to our next and our last eon or large expanse of time which is the Phenerozoic. now Phenera is latin for visible it's very obvious so the life that we see in this part of georgic history is now abundant is now easily seen easily visible within many different structures and rocks and fossils basically in more abundance and this is half a billion years it starts really at the cambrian explosion which really was the time when you had a vast increase in multicellular life and different species and different phylum and kingdoms and all different animal species and flora and fauna started to explode onto the scene on earth because the prior Precambrium had set the scene and kind of laid the foundation for this explosion to happen where life could exist and develop and increase in numbers as we see today. So this large expanse, this eon, is split into three distinct eras. The Paleozoic, which Paleo means old, old life era, Mesozoic, middle life era, Cenozoic era, which is what we're in right now. And then we have more classifications and more subdivisions based on the more life and more events and it's easier to study rocks that are more recent because there's less chance of being weathered and eroded and lost to time so scientists have gathered a lot more information about this period of time because there's more evidence more data and obviously more fossils to work with so there are six periods in the Paleozoic there's three main periods in the Mesozoic and there is two main periods in the Cenozoic, the Tertiary and the Quaternary, and the Tertiary is split again into Paleogene and Neogene. Then we have some epochs, which is again a smaller amount of time divided into each period. So we're going from Eon, which is the largest, to Era, the second largest, and then more divisions into periods, and now into epochs. So into a smaller division of time. So, for example, the Cambrian period, which is in the Paleozoic era, has four epochs. Like the Triassic in the Mesozoic era has three epochs. So we can get more and more detailed as we look into each part of geologic history. This is the Paleozoic era in more detail. So covering about 250 million years from the Cambrian explosion to the end of the Paleozoic. You're looking at the periods Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, which is split into two, Mississippian and Pennsylvanian, which is also in, just in America, and Permian. Then we have different epochs for each of the periods, and these epochs are then divided into further small divisions, which are called ages. So there's a lot more different ages based on the amount of info and fossils we can see from each of the periods during this era. Our next era is probably the most famous era in geologic history because of the amount of familiarity people have with these different periods. So the Mesozoic is middle life and it extends from 250 million years ago to about 66 million years ago and it includes three very famous periods the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous. Now it's famous for its very large lizards and reptiles, the dinosaurs, and is split into different epochs and ages, just like the Paleozoic. So there's three epochs for Triassic, three for Jurassic, and there's two for Cretaceous, and then further subdivisions of ages. Now, this era ends with a very large mass extinction event called the KT extinction where we had evidence of a large meteor hitting the earth around the gulf of mexico and cancun and the yucatan peninsula and causing a catastrophe that lasted many many decades even up to millennia thousands of years that caused the extinction of the majority of life on land however some if not a lot of the species in the oceans did survive now into our final era in the Phenozoic Eon, the Cenozoic Era, which is Latin for common or Greek for new or recent, so recent life era. 
and that extends from the past 66 million years since the KT extinction and to the present day, which is really the age of mammals. Now, this is separated into, into two periods, the tertiary and the quaternary, and the tertiary is separated into two divisions, the paleogene, which is old gene, older life in this period, and the neogene. Neo means new. So you've got about 40 million years for paleogene and about 20 million years for neogene. And these are separated into epochs and ages. As you can see, the paleogene has three epochs and the neogene has two and the age is nine and eight. Now, the quaternary is a very short period of only 2.6 million years to the present and we have two epochs and three ages currently on this most recent period of time. Our last period of time to look at for this geologic history video is the most recent going from 2.58 million years to present day which is the quaternary period. Now this is split into two epochs the Pleistocene and the Holocene. Holocene is the last 12,000 years and this is referring to the age of homo sapiens, us humans, and also divided into two ages for the Pleistocene and currently no ages for the Holocene. But you can argue that the Anthropocene could be an age within the Holocene based on the effect of humans on the planet for, from recent years. Now, the Pleistocene is famous for its ice ages, its interglacial and glacial periods over the last two and a half million years, and the ability to shape the Earth's surface through various weather and erosion agents, and the changes in sea level, and the more consistent continents and their relative positions tectonically. So we started off with a very large Precambrian time period covering 4 billion years and now up to the last 12,000 which is the Holocene which is dominated by human activity. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.